Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor. I'm a Sony Imaging Ambassador. I'd like to take a look at uh, three lenses released by Sony, which are full frame compact primes. They'll be of most interest to those photographers who are really watching the weight, the weight of the overall uh, kit bag that they're prepared to carry. So they are the 24, 50 and 40 mil. Now, I highly suspect that uh, some photographers won't purchase all three. They may choose the 24 and then choose between the 40 and 50 mil lenses. Now we'll take a look at these in a little bit more detail. First off, they are uh, exceptionally well built. They are the G uh, quality lenses. So uh, they are small, but you can see Sony have crowded on all of their uh, features onto these lenses that includes uh, the aperture ring, um, the uh, focus hole button, uh, the AF MF switch, and also the ability to de click the aperture, which will make these uh, lenses of interest to people who are shooting movies as well as stills. Now, if we look at the internals of these lenses we're looking at the fast linear XD motors so they're going to be able to keep up with rapidly moving subject matter and of course they are weather sealed so what's not to love already okay so let's take a look there is a, um, a slight difference in appearance between the 40 and 50 and the 24 they're basically uh, the, the same sort of physical size weight height etc but they're using a different sort of lens hood feature so so we've got that uh, sort of classic open style on the 24mm, the ultra wide angle uh, focal length and we've got this uh, this sort of reversed uh, um, lens hood approach that we've seen before we used on some of Sony Primes including the uh, the 35mm 2.8 ZA and also some of the, uh, the compact um, uh, zoom lenses as well. So we can see the weight here, they're 162 grams and 174 grams they're exceptionally light and these appeal to me of course because I do like traveling light from time to time such as in this image here I'm the one in the center carrying a small light messenger bag and uh, not one of the big tripods in this uh, instance so I do like carrying a messenger bag with just two or three lenses on occasion yes I will um, swap that out for maybe the Alpha 1 and a 200-600 but when I'm not shooting that sort of subject matter I do like to lighten my kit bag considerably so I was an instant fan of the Alpha 7C as my uh, second full frame camera and I was really impressed that not only did they uh, put out a very light full frame camera with the excellent uh, full frame 24 megapixel sensor but they also also turn their attention to the kit lens as well which at just 167 grams is a remarkable feat and a lot of people uh, pass over the kit lenses because they're not known for their optical sharp qualities but this is an exception to the rule this particular kit lens is sharp corner to corner so uh, I wouldn't actually pass that over if you're interested in buying an Alpha 7C as either your primary or second camera of course the uh, the ability to lighten the load in the hand does mean that we have uh, the ability uh, basically to shoot uh, handheld one hand um, with using the monitor as uh, the viewfinder rather than always putting the camera to the eye so with an outstretched hand obviously we do uh, it is desirable to keep the overall weight in the hand low and certainly these uh, small prime lenses lend themselves to that style of photography whether it be street photography or just your general family snaps now I'll just take a look at that Alpha 7C because a lot of people who are most interested in these three new lenses will be interested in maybe lightening the camera load as well. And if we take a look at that full frame RX1 which is a fixed lens camera and you look at that uh, the side view of the Alpha 7C you'll see the, uh, the impressive job that um, Sony made in trying to get a full frame sensor in an interchangeable lens uh, camera system. And now we have uh, multiple primes to match with this camera we can keep the overall uh, size and weight of the camera and lens package down 
So first off, if you are interested in um, losing some weight in, in a, a full frame system, you start, you may want to turn your attention first to the zoom. And as I did point out, that new kit zone, zoom certainly reduced the size and weight we can see over there on the right side. That uh, 2860 lens certainly uh, did come down a huge amount compared to Sony's other full frame zoom lenses. But what I would uh, ideally recommend for such a lightweight full frame uh, camera is actually turning your attention to prime lenses. Um, because obviously that zoom lens, the only compromise obviously with that zoom lens is it doesn't have those ultra wide apertures such as the 2.8 or wider. So I, I actually prefer to carry around these f 1.8 lenses. Now I know Sony makes 1.4 and 1.2 but again the size of those uh, lenses does increase as we uh, start widening that aperture. So I think the best sort of um, uh, compromise for wide aperture but also light portable approach is these f1.8 primes and a couple of these can be picked up remarkably cheaper uh, cheaply because they're not actually G or GM or even Zeiss design glass but when we take a look at the new lenses uh, obviously we are shrinking down the proportions and weight quite significantly here now the one um, lens on the left is one of the uh, the first three lenses designed for the full frame mirrorless cameras that uh, 35 f 2.8 Zeiss uh, lens there. Now I was always a big fan of this yet no it didn't have that f 1.8 aperture but it was so tiny just to slip into a pocket if your other lens was maybe the 85 prime. So um, and I'm really pleased to see we've got um, three uh, lenses not quite as small as that Zeiss lens but getting that way and obviously um, uh, what's uh, very different to these new G lenses is the fact that we do have those aperture rings we have fast focus motors we have the um, the D click button the AFMF button and even the focus hold button and so when we are trying to put a system together that gives us the creative flexibility maybe a three lens kit we can get that in under 2.75 kilos or six pounds and that sort of for me is an ideal weight to carry around in a messenger bag without the messenger bag becoming a little bit of a problem because it starts digging a groove in your shoulder obviously we don't have the advantage of uh, uh, two straps when carrying these small light messenger bags around so just comparing that um, a7c for those people who didn't check out this camera when it was first released you'll see uh, that it is actually smaller than uh, most micro four thirds cameras and it's only six grams heavier than sony's alpha 6600 camera of course this really only makes sense if we also reduce the size of the lenses because full frame lenses traditionally have been bigger and heavier uh, than their APS-C counterparts but of course that's exactly what these three Amigos these three um, small lightweight primes gives that Alpha 7C owner and of course when we um, compare um, that uh, kit zoom again to maybe a 2470 we can see the overall weight saving of maybe choosing an Alpha 7C over an A7 III we're looking at uh, a considerable weight saving if we also match either the lightweight zoom or one of those small lightweight uh, primes now the kit lens doesn't as I said it doesn't really offer that much compromise if you're not using those wider apertures uh, I was actually blown away by um, some of these shots that I was shooting with the kit lens if you just add a little bit of light so you're not having to push the ISO too high then the kit lens is going to reward you with corner to corner sharpness this was uh, captured when I was in quarantine returning from Europe to Australia during the COVID period but of course as I move further away from the light and I don't have the luxury of that f1.8 aperture the ISO starts to climb quite rapidly here we have a shot taken with the aperture wide open but now I'm hitting 10,000 ISO for a lot of people who are prepared to do a little bit of noise reduction either in camera or in post that is still a workable ISO but of course for those people who want to create really large prints or view on very large screens and maybe even crop in uh, that is getting a little bit towards the threshold of their comfort zone 
So of course, uh, by putting on a prime with those wider apertures, we start to reduce the ISO. Now, as I said, the, uh, the F1.8 aperture really is a sweet spot for me because you can massively reduce the ISO compared to maybe a 2.8 or F4 zoom. And yes, we could go wider on those apertures. You know, there is a 35 1.4, but uh, which we could lower the ISO even further, but of course that comes with the extra weight. So let's take a look at um, uh, the, these uh, the kit uh, zoom and also these three primes. They're all under 180 grams. So that two stops brighter, uh, a significant uh, thing to be looking at here. And uh, we'll just move forward and you can see um, if, if we compare maybe owning um, uh, three uh, lightweight primes compared to say the 2470GM, you're looking at a, an approximate equivalent weight uh, in your camera bag, except um, a couple of these lenses will always be in your camera bag and not simultaneously attached to your camera. So you're always walking around with a significantly lighter uh, kit in your hand uh, and you just got to be prepared to switch out those lenses if and when you need to. And the, costs, uh, the cost is approximately the same. Buying those three primes might be a little bit higher than the 2470GM but as those uh, lenses start to get discounted I expect them to be a very uh, equivalent sort of scenario either choose the 2472.8 or choose three primes. Now you'll see there that I'm actually throwing in the 85. I would possibly um, buy the 24, uh, the 40 or 50 and then I would actually add the 85 into a three lens kit just to give me that portrait focal length and the extra reach. So as I said by attaching these lighter primes to a lightweight full frame camera then we are going to get that one handed shooting ability and I found myself as the years passed doing more and more of this style of work or this style of shooting especially with the, uh, the street genre where I just simply raise the camera for a second or two. Now uh, there are other uh, primes on the market which offer those aperture rings and the Sigma primes is the classic example which has got excellent uh, image sharpness but also um, the build quality and that aperture ring. So I thought I'd just uh, compare you know approximations here. So the 24 uh, primes from both Sigma and Sony. We have a, a slightly wider aperture on the Sony and we have slightly less weight. We also have the ability for that focus hold button. Um, so we've got a few advantages on using that 24. I've taken the, the lens caps off both of these filters because I was criticized in a previous movie for leaving the lens cap on the Sigma uh, lens and people thought I had a hidden agenda in that. Notice that the 24mm has a 49mm filter thread this is significant because all of the other primes that I'm about to introduce also have exactly the same 49 millimeter filter thread. Now the Sigma primes do vary their filter diameter. So you just get a little bit of a, a weight saving in your camera bag and cost saving as well just by buying one set of filters that fits all of your lenses. And even that um, uh, some of the other primes uh, uh, that Sony have uh, already like the 55 Zeiss design and, um, prime also has that 49 millimeter filter thread. So here I am with the 24 mil handheld at a quarter of a second. Obviously the in-camera in-body image stabilization is helping me out here. I always shoot two or three images in these scenarios and try and uh, stand with a wide gate and uh, just uh, sort of hold my breath as I squeeze the shutter release gently just to ensure that I do actually get the shot. And here you see I've kept the ISO under uh, 800 to get these so, sort of nighttime shots just by the number 24 there if you're watching this in 4k on a larger screen you'll actually notice there's a little dot by the 24 and that actually is the stars are out now so um, um, we're, we're way past uh, sunset and I'm still shooting handheld with this prime. So uh, here we are with the 24 again. I've, get, I've got the steeper perspective of both the foreground and the receding converging lines on the wall. So that uh, 24 I do like, not just for landscape, but for creating that steeper perspective. And again, working handheld, I'm sort of crouched down close to the ground here. 
Now, a word of warning, um, if you're shooting JPEGs, obviously the barrel distortion of this 24mm prime will be corrected for you in camera, and it is still sharp corner to corner. But if you, um, if you acquire this lens and start shooting RAW before the lens profiles are available in Lightroom, you will be trying to remove that barrel distortion manually before it auto-corrects. So you'll need to go into the lens corrections panel, go over to manual and sort of raise the amount slider somewhere between 40 and 50 to remove the, uh, the curvature of some of these straight lines. Okay, so but as I said, that's if you look at the 24 after the images are being corrected, you'll notice we still are pulling really sharp detail in all of the corners as you would expect uh, from a G lens. And just the fact that we've taken out that barrel distortion, it still actually means that we've got the 24 millimeter angle of view. We're not sacrificed because we've had to make that lens correction. So basically it's still wider than the 28mm focal length of that kit lens. So as I said, just uh, shooting sort of one handed, just grabbing shots, you know, ca capturing these candid street images is something that I really enjoy, which I probably wouldn't enjoy so much if I was carrying the 24-105 or 24-70 uh, zoom lenses, just a little bit more of an effort to hold the camera outstretched and grab these shots. So um, 24, it, it does allow me to capture full frame uh, street images as well, where we need the entire length of the person, not just head and shoulders, which obviously we are going to be leaning towards as we look at the other 40 mil and 50 mil prime lenses. So uh, again, just some more examples, and I will put a link so you can look at ultra high definition images that I'm showcasing here now. So if you are a little bit of a pixel peeper, you will be able to maybe download the image and zoom in just to see what sort of level of sharpness we're actually discussing here. We're looking at um, 35 mil primes now. The, um, we often see that a Panasonic camera advertises a lightweight full frame camera, and uh, often these uh, these new L series Sigma lenses are also um, described as being light primes. But if we compare that maybe to the Alpha 7C and even the older Zeiss design 35mm prime, you can see we've got a significant saving here. We're over 2.2 pounds or over one kilogram on the left there and just 629 grams or 1.38 pounds on the right. So um, it depends how much weight you're really trying to save. I wasn't saying that Panasonic and Sigma lens is necessarily bad, but obviously if you are interested in saving weight and you do your homework we can find significant weight savings if we're prepared to maybe look a little bit further so I'm really happy with um, the fact that um, the Zeiss 35 and Sony's new th um, 24 have got very close focusing distances so we can do this very close-up work and still be able to actually focus on things like flowers and so this was actually captured with the Zeiss lens at perhaps the closest focusing distance of that lens. So uh, I think uh, what some people will be thinking if they've already looked or already own that 35mm Zeiss is what do I get if I maybe trade up to the 40mm? Obviously it's a slightly longer focal length uh, which some people might prefer, some people don't. But what we uh, don't have on that 35mm older Zeiss lens is we don't have a focus hold button, we don't have an aperture ring, Therefore, we don't have a uh, button to de-click the aperture ring. We have no AF-MF switch. Uh, it is rated at only 15 frames per second or suitable for 15 frames per second on the new Alpha 1 camera rather than the 30 frames per second. And that is the reason it doesn't have that linear XD focus motor that the newer uh, G lenses have. And uh, even though the minimum focus distance on that Zeiss Design 35 is okay, it is actually bettered uh, by the 40mm there. Um, so you can physically get a little bit closer. So your close-up work will just be a little bit larger in the frame. And uh, the point of um, uh, announcement, uh, actually the Zeiss design, I dare say it will be discounted, but at the point of announcement, it actually is coming in at more expensive than the 40 mil. So there is quite a lot to love about this new 40 mil. 
if we take a look at uh, say sigmas 45 which might be considered a, a little bit of an equivalent here you'll see that um, we're looking at um, uh, a 2.5 aperture on the on the 40 and a 2.8 aperture on the sigma that's nothing to shout home about really but again what we see is um, the uh, the Sony is again just a little bit lighter and we just have a few more features on the lens such as that focus hold button um, I tried that 40 it's as sharp as the 50 it's as sharp as I expect a G lens to be so when you're really deciding between the 40 and the 50 I think it'll just uh, come through preference if you're typically used to the 35 mil focal length you'll probably gravitate to the 40 and if you're um, more of a fan of the 50 55 focal length then obviously that decision will be made for you I dare say some people want to own both but um, I would typically go out with maybe the 50 so here we are looking at um, Sigma's 45 compared to Sony's 50 and um, again we've got a, a one third of a stop uh, aperture advantage on the Sony obviously it's a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter and again you're looking at that 49 millimeter filter thread which has been a constant as we've moved up from the 24 um, the 40 and now the 50 and that 50 I did uh, do a side-by-side -side test with the Zeiss 55 1.8 which is a it's a really sharp lens that 55 it's uh, most people comment on just how sharp and I actually I couldn't see the difference I dare say there is a difference and somebody will show me the difference on an MTF chart but on my large 32 inch uh, 4k screen uh, they looked as sharp as each other and so obviously the uh, the 55 Zeiss has that 1.8 aperture so um, we've got um, you know a one stop difference here so it depends really uh, whether you're gravitating towards that wider f1.8 or whether you're, you're prioritizing weight of this new um, uh, 50 mil lens so interestingly as I move a little bit closer with the 50 with that 2.5 aperture wide open I am getting a little bit of figure ground separation there so you can quite clearly see here now the ship uh, behind this um, this couple uh, is quite clearly defocused and as we move closer you'll see the background start to defocus even more progressively and uh, as I get closer again you'll see the background now start to becoming a pleasing bokeh shape the bokeh is uh, the pleasing bokeh is courtesy of the curved aperture blades which creates that smooth defocused area and so uh, as you can see as I've been getting closer to foreground subject matter we're quite clearly now getting that figure ground separation so some people might think you definitely need the 1.8 or 1.4 aperture to do that but as so long as you can get reasonably close to your foreground subject matter it is more than possible with that 2.5 aperture and as you can see here in this uh, this twin set of the uh, detail shot of me going in close with that lens and also doing a portrait especially as you now go into a head and shoulder portrait we really defocus the background so it's all about proximity to your subject so I'm more than happy to get what I need from a 50 I don't always need to put on the 85 to get that beautiful smooth out of focus bokeh in the background so again uh, I'll typically start with a half length shot when I'm doing the uh, the street portraiture and then go in for the close shot and as you can see here wide open we get the tip of the nose losing focus and also the eyebrows in this instance but um, the eyes and the eyelashes really sharp in this instance as you can see I grab the shots with the camera outstretched I'm obviously not going to approach this uh, young woman waiting for a tram with the camera at my head I just uh, walking past her I outstretch the camera I've disabled the IAF so it doesn't switch over to the face and just grab a shot of phone in hand and you can see there we've got significant uh, figure ground separation and again uh, portraits street portraiture um, it's a beautiful and um, lens for doing that type of work um, just after sharing a couple of minutes conversation here I'm able to move in very close and defocus the wall that John is sitting against here 
Now, as I was saying, I would possibly choose the 24 mil and maybe the 50 mil. As you can see, I, I lent more towards the 50 mil in the uh, in the testing here uh, because I do like the ability to get that figure and ground separation by the slightly longer focal length. So I was predominantly using the 20 and four, 24 and 50, but typically what I always carry is something slightly longer. So obviously this is not a new lens, but it is the 85 1.8 that I would typically add to a three lens kit. And if you are looking for non-Sony alternatives to this, you might lean towards the Sigma 65, a well-built lens with the aperture ring, uh, as we see, we don't have that aperture ring on the 85. Uh, what I would lean towards, however, is that 85, just because um, the fact that it's uh, a cheaper lens, it's got that longer focal length. I do like having an 85 mil focal length in my kit bag. And so we can uh, see again, there's a, even a weight saving on the Sony 85 over the Sigma. Um, uh, 65. I yes, it would be nice to have that aperture ring on the um, on the 85 1.8. But to be honest, uh, given that I shoot more than 90% of everything at 1.8 on that 85, I don't think it's a huge uh, loss. I do have a focus hold button. Now that focus hold button is actually quite useful across all of these little compact primes and the 85 because if you're working with a camera like the Alpha 7C, we did actually lose a, cus uh, a couple of the custom keys. Now in a still shooting um, scenario, I do actually use the movie button as a custom key for stills. I actually use it for switching focus area. So having a custom button on the lens that I can assign maybe to ISO auto minimum shutter speed or IAF is something that um, uh, is of great interest. And uh, I think those focus hold buttons will come into their own, especially for Alpha 7C users. So, and of course, if you've watched any of my work, you'll probably know that I'm a big fan of that 85 because as we go really close to that 85, you can see the significant background blur that we can get by moving in quite close to our subjects with that 85 mil prime. Okay, so these uh, three small compact, uh, Sony um, delivered them to me, uh, calling them the three amigos. Um, I don't know whether I'll take all three, but I'm certainly thinking of adding the 24 and 50 to my kit bag with the 85 for the Alpha 7C kit. Uh, they look uh, well built, they look uh, fast focusing, and uh, they're as sharp as I need uh, any lens to go, really. So. A lot to love with this one. They may or may not be suitable for you. You might be leaning towards the 1.4s and 1.2s with the larger camera bodies and everybody has their own preferences. But for um, people looking to uh, uh, lose some weight, I think uh, these will be a welcome addition to the Sony Alpha range. I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Imaging Ambassador. Just give me the thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video and uh, head over to my website, markgaylor.com. You can also join me on patreon.com if you want to um, uh, use me as a mentor and use my Q&A forums and member-only seminars. Okay, cheers.